When you think about helicopters and wars, you might not immediately connect them with World War II. Most people link helicopters and combat to the Vietnam War when they picture Huey helicopters flying together over the dense jungles. However, during World War II, the focus was mostly on improving regular airplanes, especially in Germany. Surprisingly, German forces did use helicopters. In World War II, in the year 1907, something groundbreaking happened in France. Two determined brothers worked tirelessly, and after a lot of trying and failing, they finally made the very first helicopter take to the sky. Now, if we jump ahead by about 30 years to 1936, the Germans joined in on the helicopter adventure with something called the Fogwolf FW-61. This helicopter was quite unique. It had a body similar to an airplane, and on each side, there were these big spinning rotor blades. The engine also had a regular propeller like the planes back then, which helped to cool it down when it was flying slowly. But only two of these special helicopters were ever made. And what's more, we're not exactly sure what they were used for during the war that came a few years later, because both of those prototypes didn't make it through the years to tell their tales. Next up, a brand new company came into the picture. In the year 1940, they introduced something called the F-8223 Dragon and this helicopter marked a significant achievement. It was quite impressive, measuring a whopping 40 feet in length. And just like the others, it had those two big three-bladed spinning rotors on top. What made the 223 stand out was its cabin. Unlike the open air setups, this one had a fully enclosed space for its two crew members. It could zip through the air at a top speed of 110 miles an hour, 180 kilometers per hour, and it could reach high altitudes, up to 23,000 feet, about 7,000 meters. The main job of the Dragon was to carry stuff from one place to another, like a heavy-duty delivery service. It could haul things weighing up to a whopping 2,200 pounds, which is about 1,000 kilograms. This aircraft was pretty swifty and had clear benefits for the war. They made several test versions, and then they decided to make more Dragons for the war effort. However, things didn't go as planned. Only about 20 of these working helicopters were actually built during the war. The reason? Well, the places where they were making these dragons got bombed by the Allies, so production got messed up. Fascinatingly, some of these 223 helicopters didn't just do transport work. In 1945, when the Allies were getting close, they used the dragon for spotting where the enemy was in Austria, mainly to see what the Allies were up to. After the war, some of these helicopters that survived were handed over to the British and the Americans for them to check out and test. Let's talk about another intriguing German invention called the Flottner FL-282. It's a tiny one-person aircraft that first flew in 1941. Unlike the earlier designs we talked about, this one had a single spinning blades on top, which is more like what we see in today's helicopters. The German Navy, known as the Kriegsmarine, found this aircraft really interesting. They thought it could be super useful for moving stuff between ships. So they decided to make a bunch of them. But guess what happened again? Yep, you got it. Allied bombing messed things up, and out of the big order for 1,000 of these, only around 25 were actually built. They made a slightly different version too, which had room for one more person. Now, it could be used for spotting where the enemy was and helping with artillery. Toward the end of the war, some FL-282s did this job, but sadly, not many survived because they were easy targets for anti-aircraft guns and Allied fighter planes. Now let's talk about something quite unusual from Germany during that time. It wasn't exactly a helicopter. They called it the Fog Akagelis FA-330, but it was more like a rotor wing kite. It made its first appearance in 1942, and it had a big spinning rotor just like the others we've talked about. But here's the catch. It couldn't fly up on its own. This contraption was made especially for the German Navy, the Kriegs and Marine, and it was meant to be used on U-boats. Instead of taking off from the ground, it was packed inside the submarine. When the U-boat came up to the surface, the crew would assemble it. This aircraft didn't have a regular body like most planes. It was more like a frame. One person, the pilot, would hop on board. Then, with the rotors spinning and the U-boat moving, it would kind of float up into the sky, sort of like a kite or a parasail. So they tied it to the boat with a rope, and it could go up about 400 feet, which is around 120 meters. This gave the pilot a good view of the area, helping the U-boat spot Allied ships in the distance. During the war, they made about 200 of these, and a few U-boats used them. 
It was quite an impressive and clever idea from the German military. Now let's talk about a helicopter from the United States. And this one is quite interesting. It's called the Sikorsky R4, and it was designed by a man named Igor Sikorsky. He originally came from Russia, but moved to the United States before the war. This helicopter took its first flight in 1942, and it looked much more modern compared to the others we've talked about. It had a big spinning rotor on top and a smaller one at the back to keep it steady. Inside, there was a closed cabin for the two people who operated it. The R4 could fly at a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour, which is about 120 kilometers per hour. It could cover quite a distance too, around 130 miles or 210 kilometers. They didn't make too many of these, only about 130, but they did use them during the war. Most of the time, these helicopters were in action in the Far East. They were used for some pretty important tasks like rescuing pilots whose planes had crashed and also for moving supplies and equipment between ships and islands in the South Pacific. What's cool is that the R-4 became a sort of model for future helicopter designs in the United States. About a decade later, during the Korean War, you'd see more advanced versions based on this one. We've just scratched the surface here with a few helicopter designs, but there were more used or tested by countries like the United Kingdom, Japan, and the Soviet Union during World War II. It's a fascinating topic, and it's kind of surprising that it doesn't get much attention in history books. What do you think about these World War II helicopters? Were you aware that they were used during the war? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, folks. If you want to keep learning and be part of our growing community, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Take care.